All right, good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Yes. How's everybody doing? Good. Uh, today we're going to talk about healthy eating during the holidays. In particular, we're going to talk about how to um, grill for July 4th. A lot of people tend to grill during July 4th. But before I go into the presentation, I want to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Stape. I work in the Wellness Center. I'm the Wellness Director. And also as part of the presentation, I have Elida Medero. She's going to be presenting. In particular, a lot of people asked about fish last presentation. So she's going to be talking about fish and ways that we can grill fish. She's a health and wellness professor, also a nutrition professor. And you'll find her in the Wellness Center all the time. All right, before we start the presentation, though, I put two flyers in front of you. One is the two workshops that are coming up, the last two workshops. So you have those dates in front of you. Another flyer that you have is about a free yoga class that we're offering in the Wellness Center. We have here today the certified yoga instructor who's offering that class. Her name's Sofia Villalobos. She's going to give you a little bit more explanation of what the yoga class consists of. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, as you can tell from the flyer, yoga is so good for you in so many different levels. Um, yoga is anybody can take it no matter what age, no matter what fitness level. And there's so many benefits. I recently saw a document about the 77 benefits of yoga. And it has to do everything from your circulation, your mood, um, things like um, treating or, or um, helping ward off things like um, osteoporosis, arthritis, carpal tunnel, um, Alzheimer's, depression, and so many awesome things with yoga. It totally has changed my life. I know that for sure. So I definitely wanted to provide that gift that was given to me by so many awesome teachers to everyone here at the Wolfson campus. So for the summer term, um, it's going to be every Thursday from 1 to 1.45. We started off last week, and Roberta was one of my first students. And actually, um, we had with us like five guys. So that gives you that it's a misconception that yoga is only for women. It's totally not. So it's for everybody. So I encourage you to come. You'll definitely feel the difference. I think Roberta slept like a baby that night <laughs> from the nice workout. And we're in the shaded area in front of the wellness center. Dan was nice enough to provide a big fan for us so you don't get too sweaty from going back to work. And I will offer several modifications if you feel like you can't really do a pose or you're not ready for it yet. There's different modifications depending on your fitness level. So I'm hoping that you'll join us um, this Thursday. And next week, we won't have class because I'll be out of town. I'll be on vacation. But this will continue all the way to the end of the, the term, so the end of July. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, one thing I want to point out about that class, this class that's coming up tomorrow, you'll be able to participate in the class as an introductory class for, for free. The class is free anyways, but you do have to be a Wellness Center member after that first class if you want to continue taking a class. If you want more information about how to join the Wellness Center, you can always come by the Wellness Center. We're lo located in room 2103 right next to the bookstore. All right, today we're going to go over what are the different types of grills. There's different types of grills, what the pros and cons of grilling are. Also, um, some of the traditional meals that are prepared for July 4th. Um, the nutritional value of some of these traditional meals, and what are some healthy alternatives. And we're also, as I mentioned, going to talk about fish and uh, the benefits of consuming fish, and also some of the, the cons that might be associated with consuming fish. So first of all, there's different types of grills. What type of grill do you use? Charcoal? Gas? It's a matter of preference, right? It depends. Some people prefer charcoal. They say they like the taste better. But charcoal, you get a lot of ash. It's messy. It takes a long time for that charcoal to heat up, and you get an uneven distribution of that heat. You have to be kind of like a professional to, to be able to cook properly on that charcoal grill. And you have to monitor the grill um, all the time. Now, gas. Gas, you can monitor the flame. You can basically adjust the flame. You can put less or more flame in order to determine the amount of heat. And that's good because we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of grilling. Um, pros, as I mentioned, it's for most people, they, they find it very delicious. It's flavorful. You don't have to add that much seasoning, that much salt. It's low fat because a lot of the fat is lost. When you're grilling the, the food, you see that 
fat dropping into either the charcoal or the bottom of that gas grill, which tends to um, cause a bigger flame. And it's easy, quick, and in some cases, not that messy. Now, some of the cons. Well, there's fumes. Whenever you're grilling, this is what I'm going to go over now. There's two types of cancer-promoting chemicals that can form during the grilling process. You have polycyclic um, aromic hydrocarbons, also known as PAH, and those are formed basically from the fumes, from the smoke that's um, let out when you get the drop of fat that falls into the charcoal or either the gas. And then whenever you get that char or that burning, whenever you grill anything, that you're basically getting those chemicals there. Then there's heterocyclic amines, which are found in the food. This you'll find in any food whenever you cook it at very high temperatures. Whenever you're grilling, you're grilling at very, very, very high temperatures. And um, these chemicals can cause um, cancers. There's some that are associated, these chemicals are associated um, with stomach cancers and also colon cancer. And in some cases, have also been associated with pancreatic cancers. Now there's some tips in order to minimize th these cons associated with grilling. If you don't cook the food for that long, if you preheat the food, there's some um, suggestions that you pre-cook the food in a microwave before you take it outside. That's way, that way it's not on the grill for that long. Choose lean cuts so you don't get that much of the drops of, of fat that cause all that um, smoke. And when buying a grill, consider a gas grill versus a charcoal grill because the charcoal grill tends to let off more fumes. Now, what are some foods associated with um, Independence Day or July 4th? And most, most of the time when you grill, what is it? It's obvious. Hamburger, you get hot dogs, you get chicken, barbecue chicken, fruits. Anybody include any fruits? What kind of fruits? Pineapple, very good. Pineapple, peaches, watermelon, desserts. What kind of desserts do you include? We heard tres leches. Tres leches, there might be a cake that has uh, the different colors of the uh, flags of the United States. Um, Drinks, drinks associated with this holiday. Beer. Beer. I didn't want to put it up here, so I put lemonade. We have lemonade, we might have some punch. It tends to be stuff that's high in calories or high in sugar. So what we're going to do today is try to introduce some other alternatives. First, I'm going to explain the nutritional values of the traditional foods. For example, hamburger meat. We went over meat, and we talked about meat is high in saturated fat. It's also high in calories high in cholesterol, and it's highly processed. Meat is very, very highly processed. Anybody know how they come up with ground beef, the process that they go through? No? You don't want to know? Basically, they use the trimmings, the, the, the fat, the leftover. And then in order, whenever you use leftovers from different cows, you increase the risk of having bacteria, E. coli. So what they do in order to minimize that, they spray it with ammonia, and you're consuming this. So... Take, keep that in mind next time you consume a hamburger. It will cost you more, but grass-fed uh, ground beef tends to be a little bit better organic grass-fed. Can't you also just ask That's somebody to get an own cut of beef and then have them ground it yes. in front of then you? Yes, then you know what you're getting in there. If you ground it yourself, that was a suggestion that I was going to give you in the next slide, then you know what you're getting. But when you buy it in the store, in the, in the grocery store, you don't know what you're getting. You're getting different parts from all over the, the cow and different cows from different um, manufacturers. Um, steaks is also associated with grilling. It tends to be high in saturated fat, high in calories, and high in cholesterol. We have hot dogs. Hot dogs are also high in saturated fat. They tend to be high in calories, high in cholesterol, high in sodium. They also contain something called sodium nitrate, which has been linked to cancers and also can trigger migraines. So keep that in mind when you're consuming a hot dog at the ballpark. Um, chicken, chicken. if you use the, the white meat, it tends to be more lean, but if you use the darker meats, which are usually associated with grilling, it tends to also be high in fat and cholesterol. And a lot of times we glaze it with what? Barbecue, which we're adding more calories and more sugars. All right, so what are the, some of the healthy alternatives to some of these meats that I introduced? Basically, if you're consuming hamburger, if you must consume a hamburger, you can consume 95% lean ground beef or 97%. Or, as somebody mentioned, you can ask your local butcher to ground the beef for you because now you know the cut that you're getting. You're not getting multiple cuts. Um, steaks, you can get the leaner cuts. We talked about sirloin, um, eye, and top round. 
hot dogs. You can get turkey hot dogs versus the beef or pork hot dog. You, get there, you can choose hot dogs that are lower in sodium. And then there's also some veg, veggie hot dogs. Are there any vegetarians in here? No? They're made out of soy, basically. And we also have, when you're consuming chicken, you want to select a whiter meat. Some other suggestions, you can include more fruits and veggies whenever you're grilling. Instead of having that kebab that's mostly that red meat, you can include some vegetables in your kebab or some fruits in your kebab. How many of you include fruits? Some people mention pineapple. It tends to enhance the, the taste. You want to have about a three to one ratio. So when you look at your kebab, if you have three pieces of chicken in there, you should have about nine pieces of vegetables. Most people will eat around that. You see the vegetables just stay there, and then you eat the meat. Um, you can also replace the hamburger with a veggie burger or slider, which we're introducing to you today. Uh, you want to go easy on the dressing or toppings. Dressing tends to be really high in fat, high in sugar, and high calories. Um, baked beans, you find that a lot when people are grilling also. They tend to include some baked beans, which is good. It has fiber, but they tend to be really high in sugar. So look at the can. Make sure that they're low in sodium and in sugar. And beverages, I know everybody wants to consume that beer. But you can make your own smoothie and try to stay away from the beer. And then for dessert, you can um, have a vegetable, I'm, I'm sorry, a uh, fruit kebab. Berries. Berries is really good. We said that when you grill, there's a lot of chemicals that have been linked to cancer. When you eat berries, berries are, are high in antioxidants, which tend to fight off some of those um, cancer properties. So you want to include some berries in your, in your meal. And there's also fish. You can also include some fish. Some fish are better for grilling than others because some fl fish tend to flake and fall apart. And as far as fish, Professor Medero is going to talk to you a little bit more about fish. Thank you. Good afternoon. Basically, um, like Daniel said last time, there were some people asking about fish. And we live in South Florida. We should be able to get fresh fish. Um, fairly inexpensive without paying too much money. But when you're dealing with fish, basically, you know, what, what is so good about fish? Why should we consume fish as opposed to some of the other meats? Leaner meats, definitely. When you're talking about fish, you're talking about foods that are low in fat, okay? The amount of fat that you're going to get from the fish is going to be unsaturated. So if you were to look at, you know, what is the reason that we should be consuming fish? It's good for your heart. And what is it that they always talk about uh, in reference to fish? What is it that fish has? Fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids. So if you look at it, if you look at the slide, you see that it has the B6, the B12, it has protein, it's anti-inflammatory, and the only bad thing is that sometimes the fish has cholesterol, but the cholesterol that you see there, this food is high in cholesterol. You're talking about 95 milligrams of cholesterol in the fish in about six ounces, as opposed to 270 milligrams in an egg. So that's a drawback, but it's not a big deal, okay? Then what are the omega-3 fatty acids? Why is this good? Because when you're talking about that, you are reducing inflammation. Inflammation is something that is bad for your cells and bad for your blood vessels, okay? It's involved in cancer. It's involved in heart disease. So you really want to consume foods that are anti-inflammatory. And there is a website, if you want to check that out, that is called nutritiondata.com. And the other websites that I have seen, even the ones from the federal government, do not have this information. You go to nutritiondata.com and you put any type of fish or any type of food, and it will give you the distribution of the amino acids, which is the protein in it, and it will give you a rating. Is it inflammatory or anti-inflammatory? You're looking for plus numbers that are anti-inflammatory. When we're looking at fish, Fish is an excellent source of anti-inflammatory. It doesn't cause any mutation or anything bad in the cells. So that's why this omega-3 is so good. Does it matter what kind of fish you eat? 
okay? What type of fish should we co be consuming? The fatty fish or the leaner fish? You would think the leaner fish, but you want to consume the fatty fish that has the omega-3 fatty acids. And where do you get those? You're going to get it in salmon. You're going to get it in herring. Tuna, but there's a little problem with tuna, and that is when we're dealing with mercury. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, the freshwater fish usually are going to have less of the amount of the omega-3 fatty acids. The sea fish, the ocean fish, are the ones that are going to have more of the omega-3. Okay, so are there any kinds of fish that you should avoid? any kinds of fish that you should avoid. Basically, if you take any fish and then you f deep fry it, that's a fish you should avoid, okay? Because the wonderful fish, you already put it in a batter and now you deep fry it, so you're basically destroying the benefits of the fish. Also, the problem with mercury, also if it has any contaminants, for example, if, if you would have looked at the slide, it tells you that there is a lot of researchers and scientists that do not agree with fish that's being farmed. Now, what is the good thing about the fish being farmed? That you pay less, okay? But what is the bad thing? The pesticides, the antibiotics, you're talking about farming fish in a controlled environment as opposed to wild. Now, what is good about getting the farmed fish? It's gonna cost you $6.99. What's going to happen with the wild fish is going to cost you $18. Okay, that's the difference. But the wild fish is the better fish, again, if we can afford it. Okay, so you always want to go for the type of fish that is a fatty fish. But let me give you some information on the mercury. Okay, high mercury in fish. Think of this. If it's a big fish, it's going to have more mercury. Okay, the big fish are gonna eat the little fish. The little fish are eating the mercury from the polluted lakes and rivers, and then the big fish will eat them, and they're gonna live longer. Therefore, the amount of mercury is going to increase in that fish. That's why if you look at the list, okay, of the highest amount of mercury levels, you're going to find it in the Kim mackerel, in a marlin, in swordfish, in shark, and in some types of tuna. So you're talking big fish will probably have more mercury, okay? Should anyone avoid eating the fish that are high in mercury? Yes. The women that are pregnant, women that are breastfeeding, children under the age of 12, they should not consume the, the fish that have a lot of mercury, but they can consume about 12 ounces. You're talking about two servings per week, okay? They can also have a little bit of tuna in a can, but no more than six ounces of tuna. If you see in the supermarket albacore tuna as opposed to the white light tuna, you want that one. The albacore tuna is going to have more of the mercury in it, okay? So you want to avoid that. Again, for pregnant women, for women that are breastfeeding, for young children. Why? Because it affects the nervous system. It affects the development of the brain. So basically, these individuals should not be cons uh, consuming anything that could be high in mercury. Okay? And this is the, basically a chart that you can use for, for your own benefit to use at home. Which fish are safe to eat then? You have a long list here the anchovy, the crab, you have lobster, you have salmon, you have oyster, you have tilapia. The problem with tilapia is it doesn't have the amount of omega-3 fatty acids. But other than that, you're okay. Um, and these are the ones that are safe to eat, but that they are from the ocean. Now, if you look at the freshwater fish that are safe to eat, you have a controversy there because you have three that are farm-raised. So yes, you get something good, but you get something bad as well because again, the pesticides and the antibiotics that they may be putting in these fish. Okay, so I would always go wild. I would always go fresh, okay? Again, a list of the high fish in mercury.
the marlin, the shark, the swordfish, the tuna, fresh or frozen. So you really want to try to consume foods that are going to give you the benefit of the omega-3 fatty acid, but try to stay away from anything that may be high in mercury, okay? Um, freshwater fish high in mercury. The different types are your blackfish, black crappie, catfish, okay? Um, yellow perch, all of these are freshwater that are fish high in mercury. Again, you want to stay away from that type of fish, okay? Now you have the controversy of what about the amount of mercury that you have in the fish as opposed to the omega-3 fatty acids. Which one do you go? Do you consume the fish even though it may have some mercury? So the answer would be yes, you can have about two servings of six ounces each, but try to stay away from the types of fish that I mentioned before, as in the swordfish and the tuna and all of those, the shark, et cetera, et cetera. Because then you're going to get the good benefits and stay away from the high mercury. So it is okay to consume these foods. Just try not to have too much. However, I would think that most individuals do not consume more than two servings of fish per week. Most people, if we consume two servings of fish per week, two, six ounce, that's good. That's perfect because it's going to protect you against any type of heart disease. At least it gives you 30% better than if you were going for the hot dog or the pork or anything else. It's going to give you a better chance, okay? Now, top five choices for great grilled seafood. We're dealing with, this is the type of fish that it's a little thicker, okay? It is not the flaky fish because the flaky fish is going to dissolve. So you basically are looking at, again, the tuna and the swordfish, what did I say was the problem with that? We got the mercury, okay? So basically, if you're going to go for the tuna and the swordfish, you want to have a little bit less, maybe three ounces of that, as opposed to going for the salmon that you can go a little bit higher, okay? So, and again, with salmon, you can go for the $6.99 in Publix, or you can go for the $18 in Whole Foods. If you can afford the $18 ones, definitely. Okay, that would be a better choice. Farm raised is okay. Uh, better is if you go outside and you try to get the wild one uh, and enjoy it. Even the color. You look at the wild salmon and it's dark red. And you look at the farm raised and it's sort of light pinkish. However, it's a better choice than a hot dog and a cheeseburger and a pork chop. It's a much better choice. So what I'm showing you here is a recipe that Daniel and I prepared. It is a lemon tarragon scented grilled salmon steak. And we prepared it and we cooked it this morning right here in that grill. And we're going to give you samples so that when you go get your food, you can pass by and pick up some of the samples. I also prepared, this was all done this morning. We cooked it right there. I also prepared a little sauce that you can put on it and it has no fat, okay? It has the uh, Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. It has dill, it has lemon, and it has garlic. And you can put that on the salmon and get a sample of that. Now we are giving you the recipe. This was marinated. We left it overnight. And then this morning, we cooked it right there in that grill. And one of the reasons why you can use salmon is because, again, it won't fall apart. If you get grouper, if you get uh, snapper, it may just, you know, completely break down, okay? But this will withstand the heat and the grill and turning it over back and forth, okay? Any questions? Anything that you need to know? Um, what we're going to give you next 
is we are going to give you a combination of all, all kinds of foods. We're going to give you a little bit of the fish. We're going to give you some of the veggie burgers. And we're going to give you a little chicken that you can have as much as you like. Um, questions, yes. You said something I hadn't heard before, which is that there's inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. Yes. Um, so can you explain that a little bit more? Okay, inflammatory is a type of food that it may cause for the cells to actually break down. Uh, it may cause the cells to mutate. It may cause some type of disease further on in your life. For example, if you're eating red meat or pork, okay, this is called inflammatory. Why? Because it may cause all kinds of different types of breakdown within the cell. Anti-inflammatory simply means that it's going to preserve the health of the cell. And all of us, we're always changing. The blood cells change all the time. Your skin changes all the time. There is always change. So as we regenerate the cells, you want the cells to be healthy. You don't want anything to be working against it. And that's why some foods are anti-inflammatory, like a lot of the vegetables and fish, okay, has the good stuff in it. And then inflammatory means basically that it may break down that good cell and cause a mutation, which means a possible cancer, a possible uh, build of a plaque in the blood vessels, which could lead to a heart attack, that kind of a thing. Um, you said that there are fish that have inflammatory? Fish is. Because of the omega-3 fatty acids in fish, in other words, it's a fat, but it's a good fat. It's a fat that you find in the fish from cold waters, mostly. And that fat is good for you. It's good for your heart. That's why you're allowed. When you see a serving of fish, it says six ounces. When you see a serving of meat, it says three to four ounces. So you're allowed to eat more of the fish because it's so good for you. Question? I know we're on the subject of grilling, but I was just wondering, since we're talking about fish, um, how safe is it to consume raw fish, like in sushi? Yeah. Well, the reason why we use heat in cooking is to do what? To get rid of bacteria. We're trying to get rid of bacteria. Okay, when you're eating sushi, it's wonderful. I eat it all the time, and it's always a risk. It's always a risk. That's why you, if you like sushi, you want to choose a reputable restaurant. When you're dealing with sushi, you don't want to go for the special. You don't want to go for the corner restaurant that's giving you, you know, three pounds of sushi for $2.99. That's probably not good. You really want to go with a reputable restaurant where you may even know the owner and the chef, and you know that you go there all the time. I always go to the same place. Always, because I know that what they buy is good product. They keep it clean. The, the knives are clean. Everything is done properly. So when it comes to sushi, you have to be 10 times more careful because you're not cooking the food. So you really, really have to make good choices because of salmonella, E. coli, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So we're done? Yeah, we have have any questions about how this meal was prepared, especially the veggie burger? Cody was the one who prepared it for us. He's over there by that table over there. It's, di it's different with each oven, you know, so your oven might, you know, the oven's up there, takes me five minutes to do something at the house, might take 15, you know, so it's about 10 minutes. Still. Keep an eye on it. You want to check for color. You know, you want to get a little bit of a browning color, you know. That's what gives it that flavor. The idea behind this veggie burger was to make it look like you're still eating a burger. You know what I mean? Like the veggie patties that are out there and the veggie burgers that are out there, they're just no good. And they're just loaded with all kinds of stuff to get them to look like a burger. So I, when I eat a burger, I want it to look like a burger, regardless if it's a veggie burger or not. So I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out a way to get it to still look like a burger when you eat it. I ran it on a few people last week. 
About halfway through it, they asked me if they were eating meat, so that was a good sign. <laughs> Cody, thank you. Thank you. This program is brought to you by Miami Culinary Institute at Miami-Dade College. For more information about the schools and the culinarium program, please visit www.miamidadeculinary.com or call 305-237-3276.